Philadelphia, baby, you're gonna love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually the worst, but that's what makes them the best. Alright, what is going on everybody? Welcome in to episode number 448 of Underground Sports Philadelphia. The most dreaded day of the summer where there are no live sports going on, but that's what we're here for. It's KB and Matt coming at you from Underground Studios. Got uh, some fun stuff to talk about with the Phils, the Sixers, and a whole lot more. Of course, the Philadelphia Union, who should be in your top four teams that you're supporting in this city as a sports fan. Uh, but before we get started, make sure you guys are following us on the socials at Underground PHI on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you enter our Twitter giveaway for the Wolverine number 22 comic book with the Brian Dawkins variant cover. It's our pinned tweet. That's You still got some time. Uh, the winner will be announced on August 8th, and uh, you get a chance to get double entry if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, so go check that out on Twitter. Follow Matt on Twitter at Matt Castorina. Follow me at KBIZZL311. Check out the website, undergroundsportsphiladelphia.com, for all you MCU fans out there. We'll have our Thor Love and Thunder written review by our good boy Christian, uh, who covers all the, the theater movies and everything for us, um, so definitely check that out uh, this coming weekend. And, of course, subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, we are there. Leave those five-star ratings and reviews. And, like I said, subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Smash the like button, click the bell icon, comment down below, and share the channel with your people. Big thank you to our sponsors who make this show happen. Main Auto LLC, Douche Arms Pro Foot, Security 21 Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, Mark Ronchetti CPA LLC, and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland. Tomahawk Shades, guys, it's a heat wave out there, and if you're going to be outside, you got to be protecting those eyes. Go to TomahawkShades.com and load up on the best small batch sunglasses in the game. TomahawkShades.com, and when you go to check out, use promo code USP for 25% off your entire order at TomahawkShades.com, and that includes the sunglasses, blue light glasses, the new prescription lenses, apparel, all that good stuff at TomahawkShades.com. You get 25% off your order with promo code USP. Kenwood Beer, the official beer of Underground Sports Philadelphia. Go to KenwoodBeer.com, the all-new and improved Kenny tracker that shows you everything you need to know about Kenwood Beer. Who's got it on tap in the Philadelphia area? Who's got, you know, drafts, all that good stuff. KenwoodBeer.com, they just tweeted it out today, the all-new and improved Kenny tracker. Uh, that highlights where you can find Kenwood specials. They listed citywides, buckets, and draft specials. So look for different colored dots to find the closest Kenwood special to you. It's a recession. Grab an affordable Kenny. You got to be 21 or older to do so. And of course, please drink responsibly. And our good pals over at Bino Board. Go to BinoBoard.com and use code BinoUSP for 10% off your order. That includes boards, apparel, uh, accessories for your board. And, of course, that uh, that World Cup Team USA, Team Mexico apparel still in stock. And the Team USA board is now back in stock. Plus, they have black and white carrying cases for your boards now. So go over to BinoBoard.com and use code BinoUSP for 10% off your order today. What's going on, Matt? Living the dream, you know? The MLB All-Star Game Home Run Derby has come and gone. Hopefully, you guys tuned into our Home Run Derby live stream uh, Kyle Schwarber allegedly robbed of advancing in honor of uh, Albert Pujols just getting an extra round. Just massive voting fraud. Absolutely just... disgusting display by Rob Manfred, as if I couldn't hate the Cardinals even more. Um, but Schwarber definitely won the best cleats game. I don't know if you saw the picture of his cleats, the, the neon signs and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the All-Star game, kid you not, didn't watch a single inning. I have not watched the baseball all-star game maybe ever in my life. Uh, even when you're, like, a kid. I'm talking when we were kids who were, like, didn't really have all the extra stuff to, like, watch now. Uh, we just kind of had, like, regular TV and that was it. It was, like, the only thing on. Like, literally the only thing on. And I still don't think I ever really uh, watched it. Home Run Derby was always a big hit. But um, I think really no all-star game. Am I really interested in anymore? I think I'll watch if I can, like half of the NBA All Star Game. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of that, I 
do not find the... I think in general, people don't have the appeal for all-star games anymore. I don't know why that is, but I, I think a lot of people feel that way. That it's just not interesting. I don't, I don't know. I feel like the... Especially for MLB, I feel like it lost a lot of its, like, luster when they removed, like, the World Series home field advantage from it. Yeah, it's also, like, a hard sport, too, to, like, have an all-star game for... Um, Especially, like, when everyone gets a guy. I, I don't know how you fix it exactly, but uh, I... They're doing the mic'd up thing, which yeah. I think every sport should do. Um, I like that they had the pitchers mic'd up as they were on the mound. I didn't... I saw, like, clips and stuff on Twitter. I don't need a, an umpire cam at yeah, all. That's... Like, if I wanted to feel like I was, you know, wearing drunk goggles, I would just wear drunk goggles. I don't need the umpire, you know, shaking because... He can't hold his upper body weight on his, you know, toothpick legs uh, behind home plate and, you know, flinching every time the ball, uh, you know, goes into the catcher's mitt. That was just not for me. Um, but, I mean, hey, it, it was L.A. People were complaining about every little thing, claiming, you know, Rob Manfred doesn't understand the game, which in a lot of ways I agree. Uh, but the complaining about wearing actual all-star jerseys, instead of your actual team jersey. Like, I thought it was just one of the funniest things to be mad about online. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I, I kind of like when players get to wear, like, their uh, their uniform, their jersey, or whatever. I really liked it in basketball, too. But I still think there's something kind of nice about, like, a uniformity of it all. And um, you can still incorporate, too, like, the team into either the uniform or still mm -hmm. let them wear the hat and stuff. Like, I don't know. I don't think it's that big of a, a deal. I could never get worked up or something like yeah. that. That's just uh, that seems a little a little too much. Uh, at least the home run derby was electric for the most part. Uh, Juan Soto, Julio Rodriguez, the youngest uh, players to ever make it to the final. Juan Soto by one day. Uh, was I was hoping the, Juan Soto like would just uh, <laughs> like look in the camera and be like, "Who want me?" <laughs> like, <laughs> well, he did have one of those moments that was caught on TikTok uh, that I will talk about in just a second, but. Did you see Juan Soto had to fly commercial to the They home almost run did that to uh, Blackburn, too, yeah, right? Yeah, from the from A's. A's. And uh, then the and Astros. Astros were like, nah. Let's fix our <laughs> image a little bit. Um, wow, you tell me the athletics and the Nationals being uh, really cheap, cheap organizations. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I think, to be fair, I think they gave Juan Soto flight miles, at least. I think they're like, they, he got to go in that... Um, they're deferred the, the Sky until Sky Miles Club, you know, like the Captain's Club. He they're deferred got, until twenty forty seven. Yeah, yeah, right. But um, you know, he at least got to have like uh, a semi ripe grapefruit and coffee before he took his uh, his five hour flight. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable stuff. Uh, and then he goes and wins the home run derby. Uh, Bad Bunny puts the the derby champ chain on him. Um, what a year for Bad Bunny, by the way. He's exploding like like. I knew he was a megastar, but he's, like, taking it to a whole new level now. Yeah, he, I mean, he's been acting a lot, too. Yeah. Um, I've heard about it, yeah, for, like, a few years, like, heard about him, and then uh, I was watching Narcos, and he's, like, a care. Like, wow. I was, like, he came on the screen. It was, like, the, the newest season of Narcos Mexico. I was, like, I was watching with Sarah. I was, like, that's Bad Bunny. I was, like, <laughs> that's, like and he, that's not the first thing, either, that I've seen him in um, that he just, I don't know. Not an ad, but he's going to be in that new movie, Bullet Train, with Brad Pitt. Yeah, which yeah. Which looks like an awesome movie. He, he kind of plays the same person in every movie, which is fine. Yeah. Um, and he's also going to be in, like, the Sony-verse of the MCU. He got cast as, uh, like, an anti-hero villain friend to Spider-Man in the Sony-verse. Well, you know, good for good for Bad Bunny. I'm trying to think what else I had seen him in, because there's another, uh, another movie I'd seen him in, I was like, or TV show, I was like, that's bad bunny isn't it like what <laughs> just jarring it's jarring when you see um i don't know when you see people like that like people you know pretty much exclusively for being musicians or, or something else like seeing them in uh seeing them in like a, a, a kind of more serious tv yeah. show is always kind of i don't know it's a little bit much for me but was he in f9 yeah, apparently. Apparently he was in Fast and Furious. Never seen the Fast and Me Furious either. movie. Me either. That is so. another franchise that I pride myself on never seeing because it doesn't do a thing for me. Yeah. Um, gotta. I gotta get into it at least once. I feel like I gotta watch at least a few of them because I feel like it's a part of the, yeah. uh, 
the culture now at least, but it is what it is. Oh yeah, he was in he was in uh, the WWE too. He was wasn't he? Bad Bunny was at WrestleMania. Shout out to Bad Bunny. Good He's year for him. Good year a for rock the old. star. Uh, Good for Mr. Bunny. <laughs> Senior Bunny. Um, but there was the video of Juan Soto playing in the outfield during the All-Star game, and obviously it being in L.A., a bunch of fans in the outfield chanting, Future, Dodger, and he turned and he, around and gave him the smirk. You know what's annoying? It's Probably true. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's what sucks. L.A. is a black hole pulling in, uh, Everybody. Pulling in talent. So uh, I did find it very comedic that Juan Soto was walking around the entire All-Star game like media day with Scott Boris like attached to his hip. I think I think that was a uh, um, in a in Narcos world they call it a message, I think. Like, <laughs> that was I want out and I want out now. Yeah. And apparently he's going to get his wish. He said he expect him to be uh dealt by the deadline. So. The Juan Soto installment of the the Nationals franchise just further proves how they lucked into that World Series in twenty. It is kind of crazy that like everyone peaked that year, and um, after I they mean, lose it's not, Bryce, it's not that rare for like a championship team to within two or three years, especially in baseball, to kind of uh, you know like fizzle Fall out there, and yeah. you you see like a transition. But I mean, I it felt like a dramatic. It wasn't helped by that you lost uh, time really, like with the uh, the COVID situation yeah. and. All that, but um, yeah, I mean that was just rapid. It was like a rapid turnaround. Like they signed Corbin, he peaked that year, yeah, and he's been a shell of himself since. Strasburg has not been healthy since. Scherzer gets traded and then doesn't go back. Obviously, they trade Trey Turner, future Philly. Uh, Bryce left. Victor Robles, it, like peaked that year and has not been the same player, probably since Bryce left. And then you have this 23-year-old <laughs> megastar just rotting away in D.C. And now he's going to get traded. Which, I don't even know how you, like, quantify the the means of a return for Juan Soto. Because I saw, I forget who tweeted, there are only 12 players this year, Matt, in the Futures game that are uh, younger than Juan Soto. I know, that's what's crazy, too, is he's incredibly young. Hold he's up. 23 years Apparently, old. Apparently... Like, the Nats winning offload Corbin with Soto. So you're definitely going to get a lot less than. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that, I mean, that's just a rumor. Yeah. But, um, I guess they're really just not interested in paying, <laughs> paying money. The, uh, man, I would be, I, I gotta tell you, I would commit an illegal act if we had oh, a talent yeah. like Juan Soto and we, not even just like we gave him like, some really great years and it just never were and he just wants to go somewhere and win like you could and i don't think this is this is you could make the case that juan soto is not even he's not even peaked yet no, like not even close <laughs> i mean to be fair in the history books he hit his first home run before his major league debut it's just so stupid <laughs> like that's insane he uh that, like he turned down what was reported as a 15 year 440 million dollar deal from the nationals uh, which I don't blame him because the AAV is not there. Right. Uh, again, they just let anybody say anything online. I don't know if you saw Joe Giglio's uh, tweet, article, clip, whatever it was for WIP, saying that uh, he would offer Bryce Harper back to the Nationals for Juan Soto. Stupid. <laughs> it's like, that's just not how things work. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't know how any team has what it takes to trade for a talent that is Juan Soto. It just seems almost, like, impossible. Someone will do it, and it'll be way cheaper, and mm -hmm. it'll probably be the Dodgers. <laughs> it'll be the <laughs> biggest like, underpay of all time. Like, that's just how this is going to go. Yeah, the four teams that are, like, rumored. It's the Yankees, the Mets, the Dodgers, and the Padres. I'm, I'm just kidding. I mean, Padres would be sick. They have the prospects. Like, Padres cool would be do it. very cool. Um, I, feel, I feel a strange solidarity with the Padres. I don't know what it is. I think because they were in the wilderness for so long, and I can, as a Phillies fan, I can relate to that. I can relate to that feeling of, like, wow, we just got nothing. <laughs> now, if only Bryson Stott can be Fernando Tatis Jr. at shortstop. Yeah, that would be, like, super That'd sick, be actually. Amazing. That'd be very cool. Uh, Maybe add some durability. but uh, Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe no motorcycles. Maybe no motorcycles. At least wear a helmet. Uh, the rumors are a swirling, though, Matt, for the trade deadline, which is much later than I thought it was this year for Major yeah, League Baseball. Yeah, like a week and a half. August right? 2nd is actually yeah. the trade deadline. So, um, But Noah Syndergaard's getting thrown in the Phillies' direction as somebody that they are interested in, um, which was somebody we said preseason is somebody the Phillies should be interested in right. because we all knew the Angels were not going to be legit come July, like they always are. Um, but, I mean, if you can get Noah Syndergaard, because it doesn't look like Zach Eflin has much in the tank left for 2022 with the recurring knee issue. Yeah, I, I think you kind of uh, count him as a, as a wash. Um, yeah, I saw I saw a tweet today, though, about the Phillies and essentially who they're, they're considering, you know, untouchable mm-hmm. in uh in these trades and it's kind of the guys you'd expect like kind of the the top end uh top end prospects which i think can limit you know a little bit in uh where you're at um in terms of like who you're uh you're getting i'm trying to find the tweet here just so i can uh, you know actually get a a good read um on who's not who's not going but yeah i, I do wonder because the phillies don't have and never really have had <laughs> you know great great prospect depth um so you really don't want to be moving too much away for i I think it's it's going to be it's a hard decision to have to make how deeply you want to go in on this team right now i think you have to and i think we've made that very clear uh over the course of this season that you're gonna okay so um this is from salisbury said this on 97.5 the fanatic uh yesterday Said, I expect Nebraska to be aggressive this deadline. I don't think they give up Abel, Panzer, or McGarry, but everyone else is on the table. Their priority this year is the postseason. Which makes sense. Makes sense. I think that's um I think that's a totally reasonable opinion. But um I don't know. I, I think that's somewhere between super aggressive and, and not that aggressive. You know, mm-hmm. like it's it's not the most ambitious you know, like everyone on that list is fine to keep, and yeah. then everyone that's not on the list is like, yeah, I, you know, like I know everyone's really buzzed about Ohapi, but I also think we've played this game before with prospects where they have like a good two months, and yeah. everyone convinces themselves that they are like the next thing, and then you don't. <laughs> not everybody's Reese Hoskins, right? And I, I have to pull up this tweet as well because it's it's so true to life. It's just as true as the um, every day I see Mike Trout has done something, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and they lost the Tigers by uh, by eight to three. Uh, I have to find this because uh, it's just it's it's kind of how baseball prospects just go. Is uh, uh, the MLB draft is so weird. Every pick they're like, this kid is a hitter. He's got power like Bonds. He's like Griffey and Trout combined. He reminds me of a prime Albert Pujols. He's a steal this pick, and then you never hear about the dude ever again for the rest of your life. <laughs> It's so true. Yeah. <laughs> Just how it goes. This is an interesting thing. Uh, Philly's Muse on Twitter tweeted this uh, a couple days ago. MLB Network apparently tweeted this or uh, talked about this trade proposal according to Jason Cantania from MLB.com. It's a, a Phillies acquire Juan Soto trade. Phillies trade because I also forgot now until recently that baseball you can trade draft picks now. Right. Um, so this is the Phillies acquire Juan Soto, the Nationals acquire this would this would hurt us personally in a way. Uh, the, the Nationals acquire Jerry's Familia. Mm. <laughs> Take him. <laughs> Mickey Moniak. Oof. Outfielder Oscar Mercado, who I believe is just a prospect, and then a 2023 22nd round pick. That's it. I'm driving all those people to D.C. in Friday 5 p.m. traffic. Are you kidding me? For Juan Soto? Absolutely. I love Mickey, but Christ alive. Yeah. Mickey's like a year older, isn't he? (laughs) Yeah, I'm doing that. I what? (laughs) That's what's funny about, like, fan-generated trades. It's always like, how about this? You give me your generational hitter. For a guy, and again, we love Mickey Moniak on this podcast, but has not even established himself as a regular starter. And uh, Jerry's Familia, who sucks, <laughs> is overpaid, and a prospect. And we'll give you a second round pick. 
Like, come on. Yeah, there's no way that could have even been real. There's no way. Um, I would, I would, I would commit an illegal act for that oh, to yeah. happen. I would. Maybe not a felony, but I would, I would do like three months for that. Yeah, easily. That's it. You know, that's a good way of thinking about things in life. Is like, would I go to jail for this thing? Like, is it so good that I wouldn't mind having my like personal freedoms taken away for a period of time? And I, I think three months, I would do three months in jail for. I, I would do, yeah, I would do three months because yeah. I'm out just in time too for, for the parade probably. Yeah. Because. Speaking speaking of parades, um, did you see the Phillies drafted Carl Crawford's son? I did. Um, Who did not? I guess we're just like 2008 World Series. We're just scouting, like everyone else is like, oh, you see Vlad Guerrero, we got for like you just. You got to go after the juniors now. This year's draft was loaded with former like superstar players' sons. I think like four out of the top five picks were also uh, in that category, and the number one pick was Matt Holiday's son. Um, but it was loaded with. I feel like we're just in that generation now, where like the guys we were watching when we were, it's you know, in middle school, they have kids now. It's like uh, I see, I've seen it a lot in like the NFL too, and. Uh like uh, NBA where it's like, God, like, am I getting old? Yeah. Like, is that, <laughs> uh, you start to see the uh, players that you grew up watching their, their children getting drafted. That's Justin tough. Crawford did not remember the 2008 world series. He said I was four. Fair. Valid. Um, but you know, Brian Barber said he views him as a, a five tool, incredibly you know, athletic defensive outfielder, and if he just adds power, he can be like a weapon. Hey, if he's like his dad, take him. <laughs> his dad was like the last of a generation of like just unbelievable base dealers. Yeah, and because it's it's not it's not it's something not, they teach. It's not a whatever they. It's not effective value now. Like it's come on, stealing fucking cool. <laughs> Especially now with like extra innings and shit, like somebody starts on second you steal third like right. 90 feet from home i think it's it's too like now a guy gets like 20 and it's wow that that was you you had to get like 50 60 you know yeah. to be like lead in that category it's just such i i get that analytics say whatever but i uh i you know, stealing was stealing was such a bigger deal i wonder if that's even like if that's even gonna be a thing you know yeah, what do we give it like five years until it's like oh ten stolen bases leads Major League Baseball? I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm honestly surprised too. It hasn't been like well for player safety we can't, yeah. have, you know, can have. But that's also why they made the bases closer. bigger, right? Which I think made sense. Mm-hmm. I you know I, totally. I think that's totally reasonable. Like we have to recognize that the game has gotten faster, yeah, and and the players are just better athletes now that should be like compensating mm-hmm. for that we shouldn't like be blind to the fact that yeah maybe maybe change things in like 20 years when we have like babies just being grown in test tubes and they're all like seven foot athletic freaks like they'll probably have to, like make the basketball hoops six inches taller because like it's just yeah and we have the first uh version of that and it's the atlanta braves mascot <laughs> jesus um since we last recorded together matt they reversed the curse I talked about this on the most recent episode, but the Phillies sweep a series in Miami. I mean, for the first time since 2010. Bizarre. <laughs> every time, every time too, I was like checking my phone over the weekend. I was, I was clutching, waiting for it to be back. And it honestly, it very never, smooth sailing. It never really was. <laughs> I think that was the easiest, the easiest series we've had divisionally too. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Maybe all season uh, outside of maybe the Nationals, but. Still lost the game there. Um, wow. Just what a total total turn of face from where uh, the Phillies usually lead us when we're in Miami. It was Very thankful incredible. Um, now coming out of the break, which will start on Friday. Friday. Back. It's three against the Cubs, three against the Braves, all of those games at home, and then four on the road against Pittsburgh. So in ten games, Matt. What do you see the Phillies record being? In ten games, in right now we're what, game 49 and uh, forty nine and forty three, I believe. I think you go. Yeah. I think you could go 
Six and four is where I kind of see us because I, I, Braves are a tough series, and then I don't think you're sweet like better team than I I would say the Cubs right now. And um, seven and three would be very good. Yeah. Like I think seven and three, be like that's seven and three going into seven and three means you really took care of business against the Cubs and the Pirates, and you were like good against the Braves. Um, yeah, that's like, and that takes you into the trade deadline because the Phillies are off on August first, and yeah. then trade deadline is August second, and they have a night game on the road in Atlanta, and then a quick day game the next day. That would suck. I hate those. But then four against the Nationals. Thank God, what a reprieve. And then three against the Marlins in Philadelphia for the uh, for my birthday too. They're playing the Nats. They have a, I, I don't know if anyone saw this. If anyone's listening live, you can still take advantage of this deal because I think it expires today. They had like a Schwarber $14 mm-hmm. ticket deal. I was thinking about I was thinking about pulling the trigger, but problem is I haven't established my own plans for my birthday weekend. <laughs> uh, so I can't really like just like lock myself into <laughs> Philly's <laughs> tickets. But uh, so I'm going to take advantage of that on my behalf because that's a pretty sick deal. Um, I think seven and three would be like ve- I'd be very happy with seven and three. I'm yeah. kind of expecting something like six and four in our next ten. Um, we just haven't. I don't. Th- I don't think we played the Braves very well this year. I think uh, we've only played them once too. We w- we should have won. Pull it up. We should have won the series, but we lost. Uh, now we second game. We're three and four against the Braves okay. this year. The last series we played, I think we should have won the second game it was. Yeah. Vaguely remembering this. Man. God, we lost well, all four of the fucking Rangers this year. <sighs> Dumb shit. Well, hopefully we get Martin Perez from the, the trade. That Man, day. I'm looking at the Mets numbers. 3-9 <sighs> against the Mets this year. <sighs> 44 runs scored, 66 runs against. That's tough. May sucked. Yeah. May. Thanks, Girardi. <laughs> May was... A low point, for sure. I'm glad we're past May, um, and on to, to better better pastures now. Because May was a brutal month for our fightings. Yeah, and I mean the month of August for the most part looks like it could be very very entertaining. That's what we were talking about earlier in the year. We got a we got a great second half of the season schedule. See if they can take advantage of it. Potentially get Bryce back. Potentially yeah, get Gene his, back. He's getting his pins out. Um, Gene's throwing the baseball. He's getting grip on that thing. This is this is the month of August for the Phillies, Matt. August second and third on the road against the Braves, like we said. Easy. Four at home against the Nationals. Then you have an off day. Then three at home against the Marlins. Then you go on the road for six. First three against the New York Mets. And then the last three on the road against the Cincinnati Reds. Feeling better about playing the Mets now. Yeah. Um, Because have we even played them since we lost Girardi? Don't think so. You know, like, and this team is just, I mean. Because we played them so much early in April People say this all the time, like how different we are and, you know, with this thing, whatever. Like, we truly are a different team. Yeah, no. Because, like, we played them. We had that really bad losing streak at the end of May. Right. Um, And then that Angel series the first weekend in June is where we. It all, it all went better for us. Yeah. So then three on the road against the Reds, off day. Then you come home for ten games. It's basically eerily similar to what you have at the end of July. Ten, or I'm sorry, eleven games because there's a doubleheader. Four against the Mets. Four against the Reds. Three against the Pirates. All at home, and then you end the month of August. Three on the road against the Diamondbacks. You know what I'm liking about that pretty much second half of August is you're playing all teams that could likely, I mean, the Pirates, Reds, both definitely are, but Diamondbacks could be like Nationals. Out, of it, um, out of it completely. Yeah. At that point. And uh, you have a, I, you know what sucks about this though? All it really means to me is that summer is already like yeah. on its downward slope. It's That's such a. It doesn't feel that way because it's like 100 degrees yeah. today, but. Um, I saw the the sign guy meme. <laughs> it said summer slow down. Dude, I, summer is the best. As I've gotten older, I've like if I had the money, I would totally be a snowbird. Like as I've gotten older, I was really I hate the cold. Same. I abs- I loathe hate it. 
loathe the cold. It's the worst. Give me like in that sweet spot of like 80 to 85, nice fall little breeze. Fall is my favorite weather because, and I've long held this belief, everyone always raves about spring yes. weather. They're liars Let them and know. they don't, and they always forget what spring means. And I'm not even just saying this because I have terrible seasonal allergies, like debilitating. Um, spring, you get max, maximum five days of like idyllic spring weather. Yeah. Uh, where it's like 72 and it feels great. And those are great days. I don't want to diminish them. And half but, the time that happens in February now. Right. You, like, you get that. Like You never get it at a time that's convenient. And guess what? The next day is 37 and yeah. it's snowing. Like, it's just stupid. And it's, then it pours down rain for five days. It's, always, it's either always raining or super windy or both. It's never, you never get like a string of like two or three nice days. It's always like one lone nice day, like March 2nd. Yep. You're like, this is what, spring weather, man. We're out here. Let's get to boardwalk. <laughs> Like it's off, and then it's just awful for nothing. And it's it lasts forever. Yep. It takes forever to get like the established hot weather. Like, it's unreal. I'm um, a huge proponent of like the 80 to 85 degree weather, nice slight breeze. The the peak weather in our northeastern corridor is from like September 25th to like October 18th. That is like that is where you get the absolute best. Because guess what? It's still like. Still gets up to like 80 yeah. during that time. Uh, but the nights get like cool. So you can like pop a window open. It's like refreshing. You can it's still nice. do a fire pit. You can have a little fire. Like you can eat outside. It's not like, it, and it's it's hot, but it's not uncomfortable. And it's usually like not very humid either. Mm -hmm. So you just get like that nice, like dry warmth. It doesn't feel that bad. You can throw the jeans on. You're probably not going to die. Um, but it gets like, you know, it gets like 65 at night, 60. And you're like, damn, this is crisp. This is nice. That's before you really get into the dark days. And it's, like, still light out later yeah. in the day. Like, it's still, like, it's, like, 7.30. The light's up. That's the best. Give me that year-round. But, yeah, I, I would I get a little upset about the 100-degree weather because it you know, obviously sucks to, like, live through. But um, I tell you, I would do 100 degrees oh, yeah. every day for the rest of my life over another, like, 28-degree day. One billion percent. I just do. There's nothing worse than the cold. I, I it just sucks. It just takes the life out of me. It's so terrible. I still like I live through it. I still draw on, but damn, it's just I like sometimes I just stand in the sun and I just like I close my I just feel like just radiate. Oh, it's the <laughs> it's just an amazing feeling. I feel like I'm getting like superpowers. I know, it's just that oh, vitamin D. It's the best. Um, but yeah, I mean, August looks great for the Phils, which is exciting. Uh, and this little stretch coming out of the All-Star break should be very, very fun. And hopefully Dave Dombrowski was working the phones uh, as much as possible during the All-Star break. Uh, also, I didn't even realize, super low-scoring All-Star game. It was 3-2, to two, American League won. Um, Lame. Boo. Um, Matt, can I interest you in some James Harden wine? Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, he resigned today, apparently. Finally, uh -huh. Finally actually done. Um, big team guy, James Harden. Yeah, big team guy. Big uh, big fanatics guy. Big fanatics guy. Big uh, go do what it takes to sign everybody else and then sign me guy. Big. How long are you doing in prison for a Sixers championship? Because I'm trying to tell you. There's a lot. Because <laughs> I already feel like I've been doing a prison bid in yeah. some ways. We've been uh, in. We've been on like house arrest with, with them for the past four and a half years. I'm telling you, I might three months for Juan Soto. I'd probably, I'd probably give away eight months of my life for a sister championship. I might do nine if I could watch TV still. In there, you know, get like those yeah. special privileges. Maybe if I'm like at a county jail where it's like a little low security. Yeah. Maybe I get out during the day, like work or something. Um, I think yeah, I think I'd, I'd do, do that. nine. And again, I'd be, I'd be out for the championship. Um. Yeah, so it's a two-year, $68.6 million deal, player option for $35.6 million uh, next summer. So he could opt out of that, theoretically, and, and re-sign to a bigger deal with us. Um, so that's interesting. Pretty like pretty nice contract for yeah. us, to be honest. It's like best-case scenario. Shout-out yeah. to Sixers Adam for being the one person who was on board with the, the one and one Um PJ Tucker looks like he's the the next uh like the next person sitting at the the adult table with the Sixers. <laughs> Tyrese Maxey quite hasn't made it to the adult table yet. Uh but PJ Tucker is hanging out with James Harden and Joel Embiid pretty much this entire summer. Yeah, it's kind of weird that we're seeing all these pictures like Joel Embiid and like other stars of the game we just never 
Never saw that. Never saw that. Uh, do you think old Benny? Do you think uh, one of our favorite topics to talk about, being that that crypto is such in the tank, do you think the Sixers could pivot from the Jersey patch sponsor being Crypto.com to Fanatics? And how much of an investigation would that open up on the Sixers? Because it I, seems like every day there's a new investigation on the Sixers. Don't think so. I don't. I I think that might. <laughs> Might really be testing your luck with Adam Silver with that one. Um, yeah, I I don't know what the deal with all the crypto stuff is, right? Because yeah. we all know it's obviously not doing well. I think if you've used Twitter, you've yeah. seen a thread at least once <laughs> about how um, how terrible it's doing. So, but I imagine they're like locked into that. There's no way they can uh, they can get out. But I think it would be hilarious if it was the fanatics. Uh, I did see, being that it's you know. His birthday today. Uh, we're talking about James Hart. I did see a very funny, uh, like meme post on Twitter. It's uh, who do you got in the seven game series? It's uh, Team Kardashian versus Team Jenner. Ooh. <laughs> so here's the post. I'll pop okay. it up on screen for the YouTube viewers. Oh man, is everyone in their prime? Because it's definitely Team Kardashian. Then I was gonna say the same thing. Like. Harden and Lamar Odom alone, I think, put you over the top. Devin Booker and Prime, Blake Griffin would be interesting. Yeah, but I, 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 yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking Team Kardashian on that one, to be honest. Quite yeah, I think Team Kardashian has the overall abilities to to get it done. And I mean, even Prime Tristan Thompson for the, like the two years he was right. elite with the Cavs, like that's a no brainer. That. You'd live with that. Um. So that was hilarious to me, and then, uh, you know, Adam Silver just I feel like is so bored during the off season that he just needs investigations because it seems like I said it seems like every day that the Sixers are getting investigated for something involving free agency. Truly, the most hated team. Just ridiculous. It's kind of weird. like we somehow have become the Patriots of the NBA with none of like the good parts of being the Patriots, i.e., winning like five titles. Yeah. Like, somehow we have become the team like that we just get investigated for everything, accused of all this stuff, and it's like okay, gotcha. Absolutely. We know Jalen Brunson just signed right away with the Knicks. Yeah. Right, but like that was like a one day investigation. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, I don't know if you saw this too. This, you know the. Ever long, it, I feel like this is one of the longest running uh, memes we've seen on Twitter. The she's a ten, but um, this one's with uh, Miles Sanders. It's uh, she's a ten, but she's a Cowboys fan. This was Miles Sanders' uh, response, which I found very hilarious. She's a ten, but she's a Cowboys fan. Nah, she can't hang. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's a. <laughs> you know, what? I respect the pandering. Um. I feel like we've we've been getting longer runs for memes lately. It used to it used to be that you'd get maybe a uh, week would a be week, like like really max, effective, you know. And it's just it's whittled down over time because I remember when there was like a meme of the month. Yeah, it was almost everybody would have like, the calendar. And it then... was almost some kind of always some kind of like SpongeBob mm -hmm. uh, like picture cap or something like yeah. Getting, we're getting good mileage out of this stuff, though. Good for us. We're getting the she's a 10. Uh, the red flags are still sticking around. Red flags are good. The new one that's uh, arisen is the Little Miss. Yeah, those are funny. Those are very funny. Um, Gender specific, though, you know? You yes. got you to gotta be careful of that. The, be careful uh, of that. I saw a response to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, they posted one. And it was... Uh, she's a 10, but she's giving a lap dance to her coach that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and didn't catch a flight out with the team. Is that they what it is? they posted one today. It was a uh, little miss hangs in the bud zone and the <laughs> Mister Tw Jags Twitter GM and somebody responded putting the mustache on to look like Shot Khan. Mister Jags record is forty two and one nineteen. I'm sorry, I lost I lost a little bit of uh all that. Who is Will Levi's? Q quarterback oh, for the I University saw of Kentucky. That. I quote tweeted that and said that was psychotic. He puts mayo in his morning coffee. There's no way that's real. No. That has to just be like a bit. 
I saw that. Well, and Shea I, Serrano quote tweeted and said, uh, the Whites have been fined $750,000 for conduct detrimental to the team. <laughs> <laughs> so true. And uh, speaking of the Little Miss uh, meme, uh, my boy Jordy just tweeted, Little Miss rolling out looking for America's greatest diners, drive-ins, and dives. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I feel like the memes are, like, I felt like, you know, you get those, like, iconic ones, like the Spongebob chicken, you get the crying Jordan. Yeah. It's been a while since we've had. Nothing, because you know why? There's too many stimulants now. Yes. There's too many, there's too many, like, Pat, there used to just kind of be, like, three sources for, Mm -hmm. like, common internet culture and jokes, and now... Especially, like, you know what the problem is, is TikTok has ruined this. Yes. Because there's, like, 70 different TikTok sounds that are popular at any given time. And even depending on, like, what side of TikTok you're on, what kind of algorithm you have, um, I think that has ruined the singularity Mm -hmm. of meme culture where now there's a plurality. Like, there's just just too many. There's just too, too many options for there to be one singular one that that's all people use. Um that's the way it goes. Did you uh, did you see the trailer today for uh, Welcome to Wrexham? I did. I'm looking forward to that. I actually, you know, I stumbled upon. I've always seen that there's an It's Always Sunny podcast. And I just started listening to it today, and they go through and they watch the episodes mm-hmm. and like talk about, you know, like filming it and stuff they find is fun. It's really fucking good. I listened to, like the first part of it. Um, yeah, shout out to uh, Ryan Reynolds and uh, again only there. Yeah, I, wa- I watched the trailer and I was like, "I'm invested." That's I'm... like really common in uh, in soccer too. Yeah, they have these. Um, there's one like Sunderland till I die, which is very good. I recommend that to anyone. But uh, there's also Amazon does. What do they call it? Uh, they do like an in depth. It's sen- it's essentially hard knocks, mm-hmm. but instead of like five weeks of preseason, they were they're with them with the whole season. Oh wow! Um, like. Uh, all or nothing is this year's guy and they've done a few american sports with the same it just never i don't think they did with the eagles big. yeah it's it's never as big um as say like something like hard knocks is but uh that's always really cool it's it you know a lot of that stuff always turns into a little bit of uh like a, a puff piece mm-hmm. for the, the club or whatever but i am i am interested in that kind of stuff Singer. i always like seeing the behind the scenes things I, yeah. even if it is a little it's promotional and you know they obviously put on a, a good face and kind of control what gets shown I still think it's cool to see people that you only interact with as like either celebrities or, mm-hmm. or athletes seeing just like a more human side of them or just seeing the background of like how these major sports teams are, are managed or mismanaged. Seeing uh, like the weight room that they had was just like a broom closet <laughs> yeah. was absurd. Yeah, like the lower league stuff over there gets uh gets pretty pretty dicey. I also <laughs> love that they were like on site like i think it was at the stadium and uh the kid goes well my dad told me that because deadpool is red and wrexham is red that's why you bought the team and ryan ryan reynolds was like yeah that's exactly why we bought the team actually that's the real reason um it's all a marketing play yeah that it had me captured the entire i was just watching i watched the entire thing this morning it was like all right i'm uh this looks like appointment viewing yeah i think wrexham I think they had moved up a league as well. I think they had done actually pretty nice this past season. Um, but, yeah, good to see. They, uh, yes, uh, premieres on FX August 24th, and then it's also streaming on Hulu. Um, not an ad, but would love to have <laughs> Rob McElhinney and uh, Ryan Reynolds on the show. Um, but, yeah, that has me super excited, and then, the Union today announced they lost uh, somebody from the Union 2 going to the the club that I can't stand, New York City FC. Um, I'm going to pull that up so I have it. Well, don't worry about it because uh, New York City is losing uh, – anyway, uh, using uh, Castellanos. He's going to Granada. So. Oh, yeah, Cleberson. Yeah, he's going to be an assistant coach with New York yeah. City. Yeah, lost Stuart Finley as well. He's off to uh, he's off to Europe. Just shows the Union are that team. That team, they are. They really are. Um, two wins since we were last recorded. Two really nice wins. Inter New England, 
That's what it's about. Yeah, that That's New England game was electric. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of what makes Union fun and a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> All in one game. Um, speaking of soccer, too, I found this very interesting because you and I talk about uh, you know, jersey sponsors and and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I saw this today from uh, my boy Justin A. Byers, who works for Front Office Sports. Um, the Premier League is looking to ban gambling companies from shirt sponsorships. It's a big push. Um, it's been happening over the last few years. So they, they used to also you used to be able to promote um, like alcohol mm-hmm. and beer. Like Liverpool, one of their most famous sponsors, I think, uh, Carlsberg, you know, which is obviously like a beer brand. And they still like partner with them in some ways, but they're not on the front shirt anymore. That was never like officially you can't do that, but everyone just kind of agreed like we're not doing this anymore um and betting is what's interesting too about betting that's been um i think i mean besides the fact that it it does fuel addiction in people it's also that some of these betting companies only exist on like paper Mm -hmm. and there's some questions about like the legality and morality of some of the money involved with some of these betting companies and where the where it's going and who's financing that kind of stuff but um yeah, that's a that's a very real push. It's kind of interesting because we're we're in such a different place than like Europe is, yeah. like as opposed to betting, like where it's so new to us, and it's just being like, we think it's being shoved down our throats a lot. Like I've watched some uh, streams of, <laughs> of like English TV of like Europe, like yeah. UK TV, and it's like. I mean, it's like mind boggling. Like, and they have like how we get jazzed now about like Wells Fargo having like whatever the draft Kings mm-hmm. little corner <laughs> they like that's everywhere that's at yeah. every like you can go anywhere and make a bet and um the culture there is like very very much like about betting and sports betting and i think there's a, just a very real awareness and push now to uh to maybe cool it because i think it does it can lead to like some very real challenges and troubles and addiction issues that i think we need to be aware of and i don't think we're treating properly here um but yeah i wouldn't be surprised to see that and it will apparently there. affect 10 out of the 20 teams in the premier league yeah and i think it's even worse in the the championship which is the division below i think in the past it's been like i think it was like 15 or 16 of them one season out of uh like had a had a uh had a, a betting betting company as, as their main sponsor how much do you think that this comes to be because of Chelsea's new ownership group being so, like, they, they're basically DraftKings? Yeah, I I don't I don't know if that matters as much, simply because, like, they're not, they, it's interesting. Like, they don't have the same kind of, I think, like, rules and worries about maybe, like, an owner's conflict of interest in some ways with owning so i'll give you a good example mike ashley used to own newcastle who got bought by like the saudi group now and they're like the richest club in the world they have like 300 billion dollars that's not an exaggeration mm-hmm. that's like how much money they have to spend because that's what that it's like a private group parentheses air quotes yeah, it's called live golf <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> um but mike ashley uh was famous for uh being like the owner of sports direct which is like kind of our version of dick sporting goods okay um but he renamed the stadium sports direct arena and had big sports direct billboards everywhere um you know and there's all that kind of like cross you know cross platform type of advertising which obviously he didn't have to pay for that it was just free advertising for his other you know they think there's that kind of stuff that mm-hmm. goes on that i think i don't know i don't know you know like it kind of be like the Clippers, I guess, like Steve Ballmer, like renaming like Microsoft. But even then, he's not even an active, technically an active person with Microsoft right. anywhere. But it would just be, I think we would treat that differently. And they're just like, not that people liked Mike Ashley either. I don't want to give that that vibe off. He was definitely a disliked person. But um, yeah, they just don't, I don't know. <laughs> they don't care about that. Um, the, the problem they have is with some of these teams that have, sponsors that skirt around some of the financial rules they have where a sponsor will pay way above what they probably should, mm-hmm. but 
it comes from like a sister or daughter or brother company of the other ownership group and they're willing to pay like a hundred million dollars a year for some weird sponsorship thing when really that that money like they shouldn't be receiving the money but they are that's just kind color of star out. technology color star technology <laughs> As a uh, as it was, um, never forget, <laughs> never forget. How could we? Um, you and I were looking earlier too. I don't know how we missed this, but like early June, uh, the SI Phillies new website um, tweeted or wrote an article about how Citizens Bank Park uh, naming rights they're up in 2028, which felt so long. Back when Citizens Bank Park was built in 2003. Um, but Citizens Bank had a 25-year, $95 million naming rights deal. Um, I don't know if this is just me, like, with the recency bias of, like, the Steelers and Heinz not being the naming sponsor for, for Heinz Field anymore. If Citizens Bank Park isn't Citizens Bank Park in 2029, I feel like everyone's still calling it, like, the bank. Yeah, because, I mean, that's what it started as. Yeah. Like, I just don't, uh, yeah, I'd be, I don't know, I, I, we were looking at the article, I don't know what it would really alternatively be named, but I will always think. And it feels like they're so, that. like, Citizens is so, like, ingrained with, like, their marketing and advertising with did, the Phillies. It didn't take me that long to switch from Wachovia to Wells Fargo. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say that. I think part of that too was like everyone just called it the spectrum yeah that's true rest in peace and a lot of people especially sixers people since it's not their arena they just call it the center right um and it's not like you know the concert venue in camden that changes names every like four years yeah it's It's like like the president four years is really that's a run (laughs) four years it was the you know i think it was the bb and t pavilion for a about four. Yeah. I don't remember what it is now. Um, it is now like something waterfront pavilion. Freedom Mortgage Pavilion. Yeah. God almighty. It. <laughs> That's tough. I'm going to... This is this always fascinates me to go through and look at the, uh, the Wikipedia for that to see the naming rights every single year for this place. Um... Let's see here. So it from nineteen ninety five to two thousand one it was the Blockbuster Sony Music Entertainment Center. Then from two thousand one to two thousand eight it was the Tweeter Center. I remember the I remember the Tweeter Center. And then uh it was the Susquehanna Bank Center from two thousand eight to two thousand fifteen. Wow. And okay. then it was uh BB and T Pavilion from twenty fifteen to twenty twenty two. Wow, okay, wow. Well, here's here's hoping. Here's hoping there's the Freedom Mortgage Pavilion. <laughs> gotta gotta work on the name a little bit. I also find it funny when you go to events there still, and those giant like storage containers that are in the parking lots there, they're still like graffitied with like Blockbuster, Sony Music Center, like Tweeter Center on them. Yeah, it's tough. It's freaking hilarious. Um, also, if you guys haven't checked it out, the most recent episode before. This one that came out, a uh, nice little post-draft interview with new underground athlete Josh Hood, recently drafted by the Seattle Mariners uh, in the sixth round of this year's MLB draft. I don't know what it is, Matt, of just like South Jersey athletes in general and the West Coast, but the West Coast loves coming to South Jersey to scout their talent. The great migration, as it was. Because I, I was listening, I was like thinking about it, and obviously it all started with Mike Trout. Right. And even before Mike Trout, like Darren Ford was playing for the Giants. Right. Um, you have Buddy Kennedy now with the Diamondbacks. Uh Denny Brady is in the minors uh with the Angels. He's from Buna. Josh Hood now drafted by the Mariners. Jameel Demby with the Rams. It just continues to be the the gold rush coming east for all these West Coast uh sports teams, especially baseball now. I feel like there's only like two guys from South Jersey that I really know that are oddly enough with the Phillies uh, that both went to the prep Zach Warren and Joe Gatto yeah. there with the iron pigs. But it seems like every kid from South Jersey either goes like Midwest or further. Cause uh, even Cody Stashek is with uh, 
the Minnesota Twins. He's the um, Milvo football Rykel Arms said. Yes, yeah. he's, he's with the Giants he's with now. The, isn't he? he was with the Jaguars. With the Jags. I, think he, I think he's with the Giants now. Um, the only one breaking the trend there. Yeah, it's like Rykel and uh, Corey Clement. Um, oh, he's back with the Jags. Okay. Hopefully he's a piece with them. I didn't. It didn't really sit well with me how they uh, they like cut him when he was dealing with his COVID yeah, bout and everything. That's the um, that's the like ugly side I would yeah. say of uh, of sports, especially in recent recent years. Also, I don't know because you're obviously more fantasy football inclined, but do you get annoyed and like tired of all the people counting down the days until football? Um, yeah, I've never been into, like, the 58 days until, yeah. like, it's like, eh. <laughs> it's like, can we just enjoy the moment? <laughs> yeah, I, um, and the thing is, especially with football, it feels like it takes forever to arrive. Like, it feels like August just, like, drag, especially with fantasy football, because, like, it's not, this is the time of year where I start to really, like, really dive back in. Like, I'll listen to a podcast, you know, every now and again mm-hmm. in, like, the off season. so just to keep it, like, in your mind. But um, this is the time of year where I start, like, kind of daily listening to something or reading something and really starting to think think more about fantasy. And I'll start doing, like, a, a mock draft or stuff like that. Um, it just it's, – it's, it feels like now until, what, September or whenever? September 11th, I believe. Is. Yeah. I, I, well, you should Leonard Fournette's tweet. <laughs> because that was oh, – that's God. an all-timer right there. That's Pete Alonzo stuff. Leonard Fournette said, they, they wouldn't have the same energy in your face, so why entertain them? Dot, 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 dot. See y'all September 11th. <laughs> Tough. Oh, man. That's wild. Yeah. I mean, I, I football's just such a long season, too, now. Like, it's like everything goes from August until, like, February. Right. And then you have, like, two weeks off and then it's free agency and then you have like another two weeks and then it's the draft it just seems like football is so in your face now that like i kind of enjoy the the dead period of football it is there's something i've felt the same about soccer too where it's like i miss it but then there's also like i kind of like waking up saturday and sunday morning and not planning my day around like catching a game or two mm-hmm. and like keeping up like it's there's something nice about knowing that and i'll enjoy having sundays back where it's like from 1 p.m to 9 p.m like red zone and then sunday night football but there's something kind of liberating about just having just having you time free time yeah i also have to say uh circling back to our first topic espn needs to figure out what they got to insert into Joe Buck's contract for him to call the home run derby because Carl Ravitch was not it. Yeah, that was... Uh, like, I like... And I like Carl Ravitch. I think he's very good as, like, a studio host. Right. But he's not a guy that's going to, like, get a viewing audience because that's what he... That's what that crew is there for. It's for the people at home watching on TV. He doesn't get you, like, invested and, like dialed in to watching the home run derby right it's not chris berman um no one really is no <laughs> no one no one really is chris but berman. gotta do whatever you gotta like you espn can't just have joe buck for monday night football working one game a week one day a week like get him involved in a little bit more i'm sure joe buck would have loved to have done the home run derby yeah i could definitely could definitely see that i like joe buck same i he's he's like that fine wine he gets people people hate on him people hate on every announcer people already turn on tony romo they're good they're good at, it's not easy to commentate on sports it's not easy to analyze stuff that's happening yeah. live right in front of you like they i don't know get, from experience they don't even, it's tough they don't even get the fancy graphics that we get yeah where it's like explaining stats it like they like it's so tough it just it really it burns me up like nothing else I don't even know if it counts as bootlicking, but if it is, that is the only thing I'll bootlick for is that, you know what, don't be so tough on announcers. It's like the hardest job. Yeah. <laughs> From experience of doing it at the high school level, it is very difficult like until you not, get kind of a knack for it. And even then, easy. like, 
you got to think on the fly a lot of the time. Like, random stuff's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't possibly plan for it. It it's... just happens. And, and what I think is funny, too, is every single fan thinks that whatever announcer, especially Joe Buck, hates their team. Yeah. He hates all 30. <laughs> or they love, he's, a, he's such a Cowboys fan. Like, no, he's not. Every Cowboys fan thinks he hates the Cowboys. Yeah. Like, shut up. <laughs> I also, uh, wrap it up with the, the all-star weekend. I don't think I'll ever get over the fact that Hunter Pence does not get remembered enough as a Philadelphia Philly. That's what happens when you switch sides like that. He, uh, That's just how it goes. he was here and was insanely good in 2011. And then the decline started happening. Oh, how did I not bring this? When's the last time you thought about Jonathan Pavelbon before this week? Oh, uh, <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how I forgot about he this. He got in the that dugout scrap. Uh, was that with Bryce on yeah. the Nationals? That's choked I Bryce. Think, I think that's the last time. He's calling out Bryce again. Now he's back. Calling out Bryce. Calling out the Phillies. What gives? What is his deal? Basically Who saying him? the Phillies are a shit show. Um, okay, Chief. And they've been a shit show since. Since I left, sure. <laughs> 2012, when everyone got hurt and basically said Bryce is not a leader. They'll never be... Uh, basically said the Phillies will not be able to uh, do anything in the postseason this year. They're not built for it. Give me a break. Give me a break. Also had a, a message for Juan Soto this week. Uh, and said, fuck you. <laughs> what a guy we you know you know what we really need to do not we need to get a good reliever not just because we need one because he can't be the all-time saves leader on this team <laughs> right that's why i was also very pissed we let hector Neris go we gotta we gotta figure that out we gotta source some yeah here's the full uh breakdown for for Papelbon. uh talking about the Phillies said their pitching is okay their bullpen is okay but in order to be a good team you have and to have a good postseason run you have to have leadership I don't think the Phillies have any of that it's always been kind of chaotic in Philadelphia with the fans with the players with the front office it's like a shit show there and for me I see the shit show continuing I mean they fired their manager what two months into the season as long as that stuff happens Philadelphia will never win again Philadelphia will never get back to the playoffs when they brought me, brought in me, Cliff Lee, and Roy Halladay, everybody started getting hurt, and the shit show began after that. I believe uh, it's been nothing but downhill for the Phillies since then, and there hasn't been anything even close to resembling a postseason team, nor do I think that they have it this year, uh, nor do I think they tried to do that with Gabe Kapler. That's Philly for you. Okay, so he's like half right, Yeah, um, as usual, but... I would say firing Joe Girardi was a great decision. It's the as, best decision as they've done. evidenced by the fact that we have a much better record yeah, without him. and have played much more cohesive we're baseball. What, we're, I think we're 27-14. and 14. Yeah. Ridiculous. Like, come on. You can't even argue that. That's so stupid. What, you should have just stuck with the bad guy all season? Because then it's then you get you get beat with the stick of, well, you should have should have got rid of Girardi. It was, it was plain for everyone to see, but they're so mismanaged. It's so fucking stupid. It's such like that's such like baby's first talking head, yeah. you know. Like, congrats, dude! You like you not just took the lowest hanging fruit; you took the grapes off the vine. Like, you didn't, you really didn't have to move at all. Those are the like, ones that fell off the vine, right? Like, your hand is just there. You're eating the the grapes out of the gutter at shop, yeah. right? Like, congratulations! And then, you did uh, great. how much are they going to miss Bryce Harper? I'm not sure what's going on with Bryce Harper right now. Thumbs, fingers, wrists, all those are very, very hard to come back from when you're a hitter. I don't necessarily see him being a huge leader of the team because he was never really a leader when I played with him. He kind of went about his own business and was more of a me guy or an I guy. Maybe he just didn't like you. Maybe he, right. maybe, like, maybe he just thought you were a giant dickhead because he was <laughs> right and just didn't talk to you. And you tried choking him. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Shoved him up against the wall in the dugout. What an unreal person. He was more of a me guy or an I guy and wasn't really into what was happening in the clubhouse and didn't have that pull for the team. I don't view him as a true leader when he's when he's out. It obviously takes a, uh, a bat out of the lineup. Somebody's going to have to step up for them. I don't know who it may be. Schwarber is hitting some bombs this year, but it's going to take more than that. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Okay. 
It's a team sport. So stupid. And apparently he has a podcast now, so. That's good. Just what we need. Jonathan Papelbon on the airwaves. One that we we talk about some of the best. How long before he's selling those brain pills? Those like uh, Alpha Max brain pills. Welcome to the. Do you have trouble getting boners? <laughs> Three installments of eighty seven ninety nine. Get you Alpha Max Male Pro, Beta Carotene, Flyboid Reducers, Ming Dong Enhancers. That's what that stuff all is. He's like uh, J. Jonah Jameson in Spider-Man now. <laughs> MCU he's, version. He's selling like years worth of uh, of like survival food kits. Welcome to the Papelbon Show, brought to you by Ivermectin. <laughs> Good grief. That that we always talk about like the best free agent moves and and stuff like that when they happen. Papelbon had to have been one of the worst. Yeah. Even though he was like relatively like decent when he came here it didn't mean anything because the Phillies were on a decline so signing a closer to a deal like that was just pointless and he was just such an epic douchebag he sucks he's the worst typical typical Boston guy <laughs> honestly honestly <laughs> too true rings way too true uh uh that's all we got for you guys with no sports going on today the Phils are back on Friday um, so make sure you're following us on the socials at underground PHI on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Matt on Twitter at Matt Casarina. Follow me at KBIZZL311. Check out the website undergroundsportsphiladelphia.com for all of our written content. Subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, we are there. Leave those five-star ratings and reviews. And, of course, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. You get full video episodes of all your favorite Underground Sports Philadelphia shows and, of course, all of those Underground Studio originals like the Just a Kid from Vineland docuseries with Jamil Demby and a whole lot more coming over there. So be a friend, tell a friend, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Shout out to our sponsors who make this show happen. Main Auto LLC, Douche Arms Pro Foot, Security 21 Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, Mark Ronchetti, CPA, LLC, and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland. Tomahawk Shades, Pick Up, Kenwood Beer, and Bino. All of their information and our promo codes for them are all in the show notes on audio and linked in the description on YouTube. So go support our sponsors and use our promo codes uh, to help us out co to continue growing the show. This has been episode number 448 of Underground Sports Philadelphia. For Matt, I'm KB. Until next time, we are signing off. Peace.